CVS one at a time. Yeah, I thought I would buzz in here because as you learned from yesterday's video, if you missed it, watch it. Uh, we are going to lose hydroquinone from our shelves over the counter. So I thought I would try and go through the drugstore and share with you guys some hydroquinone alternatives for dark spots, hyperpigmentation. So we'll see what's available. All right, I'm gonna let you guys know in advance this particular CVS, they have this like ding dong sound every time anybody goes in and out. So you're gonna have to deal with that. What is this? Peach and slices, sulfate free cleanser. Okay, speaking of hyperpigmentation, here you go. Um, salicylic acid is a great ingredient for fading hyperpigmentation and it's gentle enough for people with deeper skin tones. You don't have to worry about uh, it increasing your risk of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. It's anti-inflammatory and it helps uh, remove sun damaged skin cells. It helps with uh, evening out skin tone and using it in a face wash is is a really good way to start introducing it into your skincare routine. Just kind of lather it to the affected area, leave the lather on the skin for a few minutes, and then rinse it off. Make sure you follow it up with a sunscreen, uh, otherwise, otherwise you're wasting your time. Sunscreen is key to fading hyperpigmentation. This particular one looks pretty promising because it also has centella in it, which is anti-inflammatory, and it doesn't appear to have any fragrance. Cool, that looks good. The Acne Clarifying Cleanser. Speaking of salicylic acid, this too looks pretty promising. This peach, peach slices acne exfoliating toner. It has salicylic acid, it doesn't have any drying alcohols, and it has lactic acid, which also will help Oh, and it's got glycolic. Those two are alpha hydroxy acids. So that'll help with improving skin cell turnover and improving moisture retention. This is another good option. And it's got centella, which is anti-inflammatory. It helps calm down redness. Post acne marks, you know, it can usually be a mixture or two of hyperpigmentation and redness. This combination in this particular product is good. This peach slices, have I not heard of this brand? I was pretty excited about this clarifying moisturizing cream. Unfortunately, it has tea tree oil in it, which, um, you know, there's data to show that tea tree oil helps with acne and fungal infections, but it often can cause uh, contact dermatitis. Otherwise, this product looks promising. It's got niacinamide in it, which is helpful for uh, hyperpigmentation, very gentle, and also helps with improving the moisture barrier. This could be used as a moisturizer, uh, and you would appreciate some skin brightening with ongoing use. Uh, what else did this have in it besides, oh yeah, the tea tree oil, let's ignore that. Now, willow bark extract is anti-inflammatory. It is not the same thing as salicylic acid, by the way. Um, similar, but not, not, not in the same state of being. All right, Neutrogena has always had their salicylic acid face wash, and they come out with it in a variety of renditions. Uh, so similar to what I was talking about earlier with lathering it to the affected area, leaving it on the skin for a few minutes, and then rinsing off can be very helpful. And the CVS dupe is another great option. You don't have to, you don't have to do the name brand. The um, the generic is just just fine. Um, I don't really. What, what's this? This one's got. I think this one's different because, I don't know, maybe it's got the green dye in it. Don't get hung up on the different marketing. It's the salicylic acid that you care about and everything else is just kind of ways to remarket the same thing. This one is um, a lot creamier, more moisturizing, um, but ultimately they're, they're very similar, truthfully. Now, their new, here's another product from Neutrogena that would be great to incorporate for fading dark spots, um, is their new Stubborn Marks PM Treatment Retinol. Yeah, this is a retinol. You wanna introduce it into your skincare routine very slowly, starting uh, maybe just once a week, then increasing to every other night as tolerated. But retinol is something that you can use at nighttime uh, that's, that's really when you want to use it. Using it in the daytime, unfortunately, uh, can compromise the stability and it's just better to use it at night. All right. But retinol is great for people dealing with hyperpigmentation because not only will it help prevent breakouts that can heal with hyperpigmentation, but it reduces the chances that the existing breakouts you have 
will heal with the dark mark. Retinol kind of gets in there with the melanocytes and hangs out and and uh, helps ultimately. Yeah, this is a great product. Neutrogena, they really do a good job with retinol. Um, this retinol SA, it's a slow release formulation. Uh, so uh, Neutrogena is very trustworthy in terms of their retinol. Highly recommend. Now this is actually very, like, so this is the same retinol, by the way, that's in their Rapid Wrinkle Repair Regenerating Cream that I talk about in a lot of my videos. It's just a different product marketed towards a different audience, people with acne and post-acne dark marks. Um, but that being said, you could use the Rapid Wrinkle Repair Regenerating Cream instead of this, if that's what you, you know, have available to you. And that, would, that too would be a good choice. Say goodbye say goodbye yeah see soon this will no longer be available to us it's too bad because different launched this like a few years ago uh they're two percent hydroquinone uh unfortunately that is gonna go bye bye um all right but this is their resurfacing scar gel now this is an option it's got um it's got uh centella derived ingredients which can actually help uh, in healing hyperpigmentation and it's got sea buckthorn oil in it which is uh, packed with anti-inflammatory compounds this is actually a good option for just a moisturizer so we just talked about the Neutrogena SA retinol this is another option this is a dapoline it's FDA approved for acne but it too can help quite a bit with the hyperpigmentation issue um, similarly you want to use it at nighttime introduce it very slowly into your routine and uh, you know, just once once a week at nighttime and then increase to every other night. That too can really help with hyperpigmentation. Now, it is a common myth that I hear a lot that if you have melasma or any issue with hyperpigmentation that you cannot use chemical sunscreens. I don't know who made that up, but it is absolutely false. Chemical sunscreens are a fantastic option if you do deal with hyperpigmentation. I mean, there's there are actual papers showing improvement in hyperpigmentation when using a chemical sunscreen. So I don't know <laughs> why that, you know, is circulating around. The only caveat to that is that chemical sunscreens, some people, their skin is easily irritated by them. Anything that increases irritation in the skin can worsen hyperpigmentation. So if you're bothered by chemical sunscreens that irritate or sting, then choose a mineral one uh, for, for fading your hyperpigmentation. Guys, it doesn't matter your skin tone. If you've never, even if you've never, even if you never ever ever sunburn, like it's, it's impossible for your skin to burn, you still need to be super aggressive with the sun protection because that is the only way that the dark spots are gonna fade. Protect your skin from those UV rays. Yeah, if you don't protect your skin from the UV rays, not only will, will you be more at risk for more hyperpigmentation, but the hyperpigmentation that you have, it'll be more stubborn. Um, I want to draw your attention though to a great chemical sunscreen option, the La Roche-Posay SPF 60 Face and Body Ki Dermo Kids one. Highly recommend this. It's a great option. Pretty sizable bottle for $19.99. La Roche-Posay and Neutrogena make very good sunscreens. This is another great option. Um, no cast, the clear face. Now the sensitive skin is gonna leave a cast. This is super casty. So this is a really good affordable option. The CVS Clear Zinc Lotion. It is a combination sunscreen. So the cast is not as bad as just a straight zinc sunscreen. So give this a try and uh, it's another great option. Unfortunately, it seems as though this particular CVS is out of the CeraVe Face Tinted SPF, which doesn't surprise me. It is a great tinted sunscreen. Tinted sunscreens are something you wanna lean into if you were dealing with hyperpigmenta hyperpigmentation because they have iron oxides in them. Iron oxides can actually protect potentially from pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. You know, sunscreens, they protect you from ultraviolet radiation that destroys your collagen, upregulates pigment production abnormally, burns the skin, uh, and ages, ages you. But you also have visible light, um, like what's coming from those light bulbs. And that too can and does contribute not only to hyperpigmentation, but to more stubborn and earlier onset hyperpigmentation. Now I pointed up here to the lights. Um, the majority of that, that light 
uh, that you have to worry about actually comes from the sun. But be mindful, the light that I just mentioned that comes from the sun, it comes through window glass. So while these light bulbs, I don't know what kind of bulbs these are here in CVS, they actually may, may emit some UV if they're fluorescent bulbs, um, and of course visible light. But the dose from that is negligible in comparison to what's coming through the window glass there in terms of everything that's gonna uptick the hyperpigmentation so that's why you need to wear sunscreen every day uh, to protect your skin and to help fade that hyperpigmentation because you got a lot of offenders that are upregulating and making the pigment more persistent now rock is another brand that does retinol pretty well unfortunately they put fragrance in the majority of their products but they have a vitamin c serum here now vitamin c is really trendy and very popular but unfortunately it's very difficult to formulate it in such a way that it's actually stable there are a few forms that are stable but they're not evidence-based as being effective and this 3-o-ethyl ascorbic acid is what they have in here and it's not effective and it often can cause more irritation so i don't recommend this plus does it have fragrance in it too yes, i wouldn't i wouldn't go for that what's this gel cleanser multi-correction mm, 1549 no <laughs> Palmers always puts fragrance in their, their products and fragrance for people dealing with hyperpigmentation, it actually can make things worse because some fragrance ingredients, they act as vasodilators um, in the skin, meaning they increase redness. And for some issues of hyperpigmentation, namely, um, uh, namely melasma, there is an underlying uh, vascular component for which that could work then. Uh, what does this have in it besides fragrance? Yeah, see, eugenol is a name for fragrance. That's actually a vasodilator. And citronellol is another fragrance ingredient. Anyways, this is just a bunch of oils. Um, oh, and a retinol. I would stick to the Neutrogena retinol that I mentioned earlier or Differin. Urban Skin RX has some good products, but they have a few with too many ingredients. Let's check out what they have here. This even tone cleansing bar, if I remember correctly, is a good option because I think this has, yeah, it's got kojic acid. That's a great alternative to hydroquinone. It's a great alternative to hydroquinone kojic acid. Plus this also has niacinamide and azelaic acid, another wonderful ingredient for fading hyperpigmentation. Uh, you just lather it to the face, let that lather sit on the skin for a little while and then rinse it off. What's in the even up? super glow serum this has this has kojic acid in it which is like i said great for dealing with hyperpigmentation full ingredient list here oh here we go oh unfortunately this one's got orange peel oil that they should leave out because orange peel oil can actually uh, worsen the hyperpigmentation issue when you go out in the sun so i would say this unfortunately is not good but I do recommend the bar, it's good. What's this clear and even tone clarifying glycolic pads? This has papaya fruit extract in it that can be irritating, but otherwise this looks promising because it's got kojic acid, niacinamide, and arbutin, and glutathione, and azelaic acid, and salicylic acid, and glycolic. This has a nice combination of logical skin brightening ingredients that are a good alternative. I only, my only reservation is I worry that something like this could cause irritation because of the papaya and that would ultimately worsen the hyperpigmentation issue. Oh, Ambi, been a long, long way together. I change you if I could. Yeah, that'll be gone soon, so get it while it's here. These things do nothing for you. I mean, they're fun or whatever, but they often have fragrance like lavender. But yeah, I mean, witch hazel, it's, it's something people love and like cling to and adore. Cool. It's not going to fade hyperpigmentation and you can get irritation from witch hazel and that would worsen your hyperpigmentation. So don't be like attracted to this because it's popular on social media. Um, you know, it's not, it's not a solution to hyperpigmentation. Likewise, rose water, I've talked about this in many videos, but rose water 
is just, you know, another kind of fragrance. This eczema honey soothing facial cream is promising as a facial moisturizer with niacinamide that can help with the skin brightening thing and help fade the hyperpigmentation. It does have coconut oil in it. Now, some people find that coconut oil uh, aggravates their acne and it also has rosehip oil, which can be potentially irritating, but otherwise that looks good. Don't use facial scrubs or scr mechanical scrubs. Uh, that is a common mistake people run into with hyperpigmentation. They think, oh, I'll just scrub it and it'll come out. No, that can actually worsen things quite a bit. What does this have in it? Just light brown sugar. Yeah, I don't recommend doing that. What ends up happening is it can create little, little tiny tears in the skin, make your skin dry ultimately. So I wouldn't go for that. What is this nourishing face serum? Intense hydration, quick absorption. Oh, this has tea tree oil in it. Stay away. That, oops, can worsen your hyperpigmentation because of the stability issues. All right, let's talk about body hyperpigmentation. You may be tempted by these Olay retinol body washes. I don't know what kind of gimmick this is. Retinol needs to stay on the skin in order to work. I don't get this whole, like, slashing it on in a body wash form. Suspicious. Um, I do have a video on body retinols. Of course, you can use different or any any retinol on your body um, but if you have a, you know a large surface area you're trying to target check out my video on body retinols I cover a few there including that uh, advanced clinicals body retinol that you can get at Walmart for like under ten dollars for a large tub it's a great value that is a good option don't sleep on amylactin either for body hyperpigmentation dark elbows dark knees a lot of that has to do with frictional hyper um, a lot of that is an actual true hyperpigmentation. It's actually frictional related, but this can help with both actual hyperpigmentation as well as that kind of frictional stuff because it softens, hydrates, and gently exfoliates. This is a great product. It, it's got ammonium lactate in it, which is you know kind of like a lactic acid. Uh, so great option. Don't sleep on it if you're dealing with hyperpigmentation on the body. It takes time. Uh, you know, fading hyperpigmentation takes a long time. Take photos. Take photos and compare every two months. When it comes to drugstore vitamin C, this Vichy Lift Active Vitamin C Brightening Skin Corrector is probably one of your better options. Um, I do recommend it. It's from, Vichy is a L'Oreal brand and, uh, you know, this is one to try. But unfortunately, uh, you know, as I've said in videos before, Vitamin C is very difficult to formulate and it always has stability issues. So just be aware of that. You could plunk down, you know, close to 30 bucks here for something that isn't going to do much. And I know you've probably already tried everything and you're already frustrated with products not working. So I just want you to be aware of the fact that there is a chance that that will do very little to nothing. Ew, this is new. Um, the Eucerin Hydrating Cleansing Gel. Eucerin does not make bad products um, at all. So if you're looking for a gentle face wash, I would predict, I would bet $10.99 that that is gentle and effective. Want to make sure you are cleansing your skin at the end of the day because uh, pollutants and dirt and things, they generate free radicals that can ultimately keep the hyperpigmentation lingering around longer. So you do want to make sure you cleanse your skin at the end of the day to remove um, dirt, makeup, all that stuff. Because at nighttime, here's the thing, at nighttime, there's still free radical damage occurring from the day's exposures to things like UV. And your immune system is trying to clear all that up. And if you've got additional junk on the skin, it's just more that it's gonna be going on. What is these paparazzi hand sanitizers? Those look fun. Anyways, I digress. To generate free radicals, to aggravate hyperpigmentation, cause irritation, more acne breakouts. So wash your face at the end of the day. You don't need to wash your face twice a day, although I know some people love to do that and they find that, you know, they can't, they can't live without washing their face twice a day, fine. But sometimes in your life you, your skin, you know, it may need different things. You may find that washing the face twice a day ends up being drying. Your skin starts making less oil, more prone to dryness and irritation. So if you find that to be the case, back off on the frequency. Just do it once a day. 
smile, you're on candid camera. All right, so I buzzed over here to the limited kind of men's selection. Uh, and this Cremo brand has this Defender Series Brightening Serum. It says with vitamin C, but the form of vitamin C in this is tetrahexyl decyl ascorbate. Again, one of the less well studied forms, but stable. So that might help. At the end of the day, this seems like a reasonable moisturizer. It says it also has peptides that can help with moisture retention and hydration, which ultimately just improves the look of hyperpigmentation. Having a hydrated, moisturized stratum corneum kind of blurs hyperpigmentation a bit. Uh, Crema also has a face cream with retinol. Now this looks promising. I would say this is worth a try. Um, I don't have as much confidence in their retinol as like as like Johnson & Johnson or L'Oreal just because they've been doing retinol for a long time and you know they got a big r and I don't know much about Cremo. Cremo, Cremo, but this looks promising because it's got ceramides in it. It's not tested on animals. This is an option. We also have an eye cream version of it. Now, I, you guys know eye creams are like not necessary. You can just use your regular moisturizer, but retinol can be very irritating around the eyes. So if you have hyperpigmentation around the eyes that you're trying to fade, a retinol eye cream is a good thing to entertain. Um, so this is an option, I suppose. I don't know much about, again, their R&D or anything, but Neutrogena has a retinol eye cream that I recommend. I'll link it down below. All right, this is definitely another product worth considering if you're trying to fade hyperpigmentation, the Bliss Clear Genius 10% AHA, BHA, PHA blend. Uh, that's a lot of AHA, but anyways, alpha hydroxy acid is great for fading hyperpigmentation. It lifts it up, exfoliates it out, and it helps improve moisture retention. Salicylic acid, which is BHA, we already talked about. Um, and then polyhydroxy acids also just help with moisture retention. But this product also has licorice root, which is great for not only fading hyperpigmentation, but for addressing uh, redness. This is a good product to entertain the idea of using if you deal with dark spots. So yeah, I hope this video is helpful to you guys in terms of pointing out some alternatives to hydroquinone and products that are helpful for fading hyperpigmentation and some tips and what have you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.